Mother and I arrive outside the archery school. The wind chimes jingle as she pushes the door open. His mother is me. Inside, I step inside and find my classmates have started on le the lesson without me. Arrows whistle one by one th towards those targets lined up along the far end of the hall. A boy fumbles his bow and almost pierces an arrow through his foot. Ouch! Ugh. Every time I show up, these kids panic as if I have thrown mud into their eyes. They sure know I have more pressure piled on me than everyone here combined. Most children attend a variety of classes. Classes. Fencing, literature, dance, but in my case, I have only archery. Fencing? This has got to be during, um, during like a period in which Europeans were starting to exert cultural influence over Japan, cause, or else just weird terminology used by the author, because when you think of fencing, you think of a very European sport. Um, like, traditional Japanese fencing, you'd probably call something like kendo, or is it koryu? I think maybe that might just be sword techniques, but I was just reading Aaron's the Ghost Archer history, but like, yeah, and and there's this this like this 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 right now Tayo is and Aaron, I'm probably saying that wrong, give a very um like they're they're part of a noble class, right? So it's it's an interesting idea to see what kind of situation they're in. Um, I guess it could be like a kind of Prince and the Pauper. Princess and... No, Prince and the Pauper, right? That's why it's not Princess and the Pauper. Scenario with, you know, Birdling, Bimonia being this real country bum, because she's literally, like, <laughs> living in a cave in the woods, and Tayo being this very up scale of standing character and thus the core conflict of the story would be about challenging those social and cultural standards or practices where you know and there's another le level which is like partly racism maybe even speciesism where birdling girl is not even human. She is a birdling. But I am already the best student here thanks to mother's guidance. But I will always have a target on my back. If I fall, mother will train me from dawn till dusk until order is restored. My instructor, he hands me some bow along with some arrows. The my tree skills have long since surpassed him. I still greet him with a bow out of respect. You know, seniority and all that. My instructor, he does smile, but behind that facade, he mu must wonder why I bother to attend these classes. The other parents are less subtle as they mutter to one another. The naysayers open their mouths when others of their kind are around. They like to rant together as if it makes them feel important. Haters gonna hate. Mother often says talk is for the weak. I would explain why she doesn't take literature classes, I guess. And you know, they don't say that the pen is mightier than the bow and arrow. So I'll pay these fools no heed. I aim the bow at my target and let the arrow loose. Ooh, get some nice art. Not as nice as the art of the pinky promise, in my opinion. Also, I, I, I'm not familiar with the proper stances and technique and form used in archery, especially in Japanese archery, which I'm, I'm, I'm sure has some differences towards something like the, the British longbow, the English longbow, I think it was called, not British, or, or the Mongolian using their, um, their curved bow, I can't remember what the name is called. But you, but you know what I'm talking about, and if you don't, it don't matter. 
you can always look it up. My first shot misses the bullseye by three to four inches. I think that's more for us. I don't know if Japan used the, the inch system. Imperial. Yeah, Imperial. But you know, whatever. <laughs> I should still be warmed up for my earlier hunt. So there's no excuse. My next shot hit their mark dead on. You split the arrow like Robin Hood. A couple of mothers on the far end continue to chat, but every time I shoot, they will glance over to see where my arrow hits. Three more bullseyes, and the mothers respond with a click of their tongue. My success must have somehow offended them. Hate is gonna hate. They're saying that bread is just lucky to have eating his mayor, or something just as worthless. Rocky? Ha! I'm the best because I train in the wilderness while these kids stay home and pick their nose. I take offense to that as a kid who stayed home and picked his nose all day. I should think my work ethic was earned, not inherited. If I had an ordinary mother, parents would have no excuse when I beat their children in every tournament. Sometimes I wonder what it would be like to be born to a different family. Oh, perhaps we're hinting at a family switch. A trading places. Oh man, she loses focus in my next shot, almost fixes fixes the entire board, misses. These women, of course, are quick to sneer at my failure. Do not anger me lest you will have an error lodged in your heads. There's probably nothing inside that skull anyway. I lower my bow and draw a deep breath. A lady must banish such stuff thoughts from her mind. Sometimes I feel like a demon has taken shelter inside my head, but I will not let it win. Are we hinting at some sort of mental illness thing here? Um, or an actual demon? Perhaps it's just, you know, a regular offhand comment about how people get angry. Regardless, those women have wandered too close to the boards. They must be oblivious to the danger that looks outside our village. Perhaps I should teach them a lesson. Mmm. Ooh. I feel like scaring them witless will be better for story development. I also feel like it's almost time for me to quit recording this and move on. Um. Take a break, you know. I need to get more liquid to drink. As I aim my bow, the woman once again peeked in hopes I would miss the board. Not to worry. Here comes a chance, a miss you ladies will never forget. The women look bewildered as I point the bow towards them. These two have no idea their eyes could end in a blink. Most of the villagers stomp around town as if they are immortal. Well, immortal this! I shoot at the women and gasp to act like my hand slipped. Oh! These ladies scream as my arrow slices through the air towards them. One of the women flails about and wanders towards the arrow's trajectory. Stand still, you fool! Like... <laughs> my breath stalls as I realize this could turn into a murder. My arrow digs into the wall, missing the one by a couple of inches. As she collapses to her knees with teary eyes, a torrent of gill washes away my anger. Like, like how, how close did you cut this? Because if, like, I ain't no archer. I already said that. But I think arrows go pretty fast. If sh someone was, like, in an archery range and shot an arrow at me, I probably wouldn't have a lot of time to move. Um, with this demon inside of me, I have no right to think of myself as Bimonia's older sister. I'm more, more inhuman than any birdling could ever hope to be. The woman points a crooked finger at my way. Dad, get girl! Dad! Oh my. <laughs> I don't know, I don't feel like saying it for some reason. Um... The instructor announces, please, keep away from the boards. The woman raises a hand in defeat. What? So this is our fault? Fine, the other woman says. See if we ever come back here again. Huh. 
She stomps up to her child and drags him out of school. The other woman follows suit as she tows her two kids home. Ladies, please check out the medals hanging on the wall. Most of them came from my victory against other villagers. Before I showed up, this place was on the verge of closing. The school needs me, but no one will cry over a couple of losers. Oh dear, I must keep these dark thoughts at bay. It was no excuse for such malin mal malintent. Malintent? Is that how you say it? Wow. I've seen that written, but I've never said it or heard it. Probably have, and just not realized there was a word that was being said. My daughter spank me good once we are behind closed doors. Instructor claps his for attention. Back to training, everyone. Nothing to see here. I glance at my bow, unsure if I, too, should continue. Mother steps in to provide the answer. Time to leave. As I turn my weapon, Mother bows at the instructor in apology. The second she leaves, the parents erupt into a fountain of gossip. On my way out, I also bow at the instructor to help him save face. My mind may be a mess, but I sincerely regret my actions. I leave the school and hurry back to Mother's side. Her arm usually rests limply while she walks. But tonight, they swing about with every step. Ooh, she's mad. Gonna get snapped. The villagers bumble around town, ignorant of Mother's fury. Their lantern makes me dread them. Makes me dread they want to set me on fire as if I were a witch. Evening breeze makes me shiver, and I lower my head to acknowledge my shame. Of course, the heavens are aware of my crime. Ooh, here comes some Fire Emblem or Medieval Valkyrie Chronicle looking dudes. A cloud of hooves makes me gaze up and find three Crimson Squad soldiers on horseback. <gasps> are they here to arrest me? No, as if the king has time for such trivial incidents. Still, I stare at Mother's back to avoid eye contact. The soldiers' red uniforms symbolize royalty, but they make... they only make me think of blood. As the guards approach, the villagers straighten their postures. The, the soldiers' bows and blades can destroy your bravery. Not that the townsfolk have much to begin with. Meanwhile, Mother marches past these soldiers without stepping out of their way. This is why she fills me to the brim with terror and pride. Once the guards pass me, <sighs> I exhale. I saw Mother deal with, at least not behind bars. Mother and I return to the bridge, but the fish feeding lady ain't around. This town becomes deserted after dark. I welcome the villagers' presence for once, as they can protect me from Mother's wrath, but instead, they take shelter and force me to confront her alone. Mother stops in the middle of the bridge, which I know is a bad sign. Perhaps my fear is to blame, but even the river seems to reek of sewage. A flock of ravens croak from the trees above. They seem eager to watch as Mother delivers her punishment. Even animals must have a thing for drama. Did you aim for that woman on purpose? Mother asks. My, my, my hand slipped. I stared into Mother's eyes. Most kids would avoid her gaze, but I know what it takes to get away with a lie. Even if you fool me, the heavens will always know, Mother says. Was it an accident or not? Mother is right. This night, when I perish, Hell will claim me before my corpse even has time to rot. I wish to share Mother's sense of justice, but my approach is as wrong as can be. Forgive me, Mother. My tears, my tears blur my vision. When Mother lifts her hand, I shut my eyes and I brace for a smack. I may stumble off the bridge if she hits me hard enough. Mother instead fondles my hair. In my head, it swivels like a spin top she had brought me last week. 
those women enrage me also. But Tyo, only God has the right to pass judgment. Yes, mother, I bury my face in her chest, and her, and her warmth allows me to calm. I said that out of order and tried to catch it, but it um didn't turn out right. To the demon who dwells in my heart, you are out of luck. So long as I follow in mother's footsteps, you will never tear me free. You will never tear free from my chains. Yeah. I'm getting tired here. Need to take a break. Here we are, home at last, with mother around. Even the lilies in the yard smell extra sweet. Since there is no one nearby, I let down my guard and skip across the lawn. Mother immediately grabs my shoulder to pin me in place. It was unsightly of me to prance around like a tomboy. But Mother usually lets these things slide when the mood is right. And again, Mother has always been unpredictable. One moment she spoils me with the sweet words and the next she scares me witless. M -m Mother! I just up as I am about to apologize, Mother puts a finger over her lips, demanding silence. I cup hands over my mouth, and at last recognize the problem. There are two male voices coming from inside the house. Crap, they're here! One of the men whispers. His squeaky voice reminds me of a mouse. Don't freak out, it's just a woman with a brat. The other vo man's voice is, is deep. Just a woman? This is iron! We are so dead! Got some dramatic drums going on. Some perilous percussion in the background. Mother kicks the door open. Stands an oversized man wielding a butcher's knife. I was thinking, you know, traditionally Japanese doors slide, so did she literally like kick the paper door in? He almost trips over the door. Matt on his retreat into our kitchen. Mother pulls me behind her for safety. Pains me to admit this. Without my bow and arrow, I am no different than any other village kid. If Mother had been careless, she would now have a blade buried in her gut. Thank goodness she is ever vigilant. More Fire Emblem goons. The man's partner in crime is also in the kitchen, which leaves us in a two on two standoff. His partner is so skinny. Is that her knife? He resembles a withered tree. Mother marches into the kitchen as if these men were her butlers. Those thieves are the ones with their backs pressed up against the wall. The men have masks on their face with cloths, but I still recognize their voices. These guys can often be seen in one of the valleys near the bridge. Alleys. Since these two are locals, surely they know Mother's reputation. <gasps> they must have some kind of death wish. An undergarment spills out from one of their backpacks. Right, I would have, I should have known. After all, I've seen these men eye mother with lust on more than one occasion. These men reek like they have not bathed in months, and our kitchen now smells like urine. I'd rather not know what these guys were up to before we showed up. These men, I, bleh. these men are draped in rags that make Bimonia look like a princess. This is a girl who was with spiders and roaches her whole life. One of the men stole Mother's bow, but he forgot to grab the arrows. Thank heavens he's a fool, or Mother would have been shot dead. Mother brushes a lock of hair behind her ears. You could have escaped before sunset, but you have been blinded by greed. The skinny man pushes his partner, who shoves him right back. Mother has blocked the escape route and neither of them wishes to fight for freedom. She's nothing without a bow. No, crap, that was the other guy. She's nothing without a bow. This gonna guy pushes his partner so hard he almost trips. Go on, you got this. With a shriek, the oversized man, oversized man rushes towards mother. The man flails his knife. Mother dodges every swing with ease. Soon enough, she snatches his wrists and pulls him towards her. Mother slams her palm into the thieves' jaw. The man's eyes roll white, then he crashes onto the carpet. 
several plates slip off the table and shatter around him. The skinny man seizes this opportunity to charge at me, but I know his goal is the door behind my back. I just need to stick a leg out and this guy will fall flat on his face unless he plans to take you hostage. My foot, however, refuses to obey and instead trembles in fear. Mother pinches my collar and tugs me to her side, now, so now the skinny man is free to escape. Mark my words, I'll be back! The man kicks our pot plant. A pot plant? Like marijuana? Mother takes a step towards him and he scampers off into the night. This guy talks big, but I bet he will flee to another village. As for his unconscious partner in crime, we will leave him for the Crimson Squad to him. Mother wraps her arms around me. She has no fear for her well-being, but she's scared little kitten when it comes to my safety. Mother's arms shiver around my body. Though she rarely mentions father, she must miss him dearly during times like these. Mother's warmth puts me at ease, like nothing else can, and I pray she will never, ever leave my side. If Mother had not dragged me back, I swear I would have tripped that feet over. No way can the daughter of Iron stand paralyzed like an ordinary child. You okay, Mother? I circle my hands around her back to calm her nerves. Please hang on just for a while longer. Once I grow up, I vow to become a fine archer and protect Mother with my life. And that is the end of at least this part of the last bird thing. Looks like this. Oh, is this. This can't be back to Beamonia. Oh my god, this demo just goes on and on. Wow, there is more content than I expected. Uh, that's probably a good sign, I guess. That has been at least a couple episodes of The Last Birdling. Probably will be split up into two. This recording, at least. I might be back to this later. And if I am, I hope you are too. Check it out, the demo is currently free. I expect it will always be free. Like, I, like it's, it's a good visual novel so far. Um, the writing is pretty good, you know, I don't have any problem with it. The plot seems to be moving along. We got this dual protagonist system going down, which, you know, let's see how that plays out. It hasn't been a huge amount to come about from it yet, but, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty good. And, uh, yeah, if you have any comments on what I can do to improve, or just any comments about anything really in general, feel free to leave them comment section below and uh yeah subscribe if you want to that would help me out liking as well and uh i hope to see you again